Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Israelites. Say it again. What verse tells us that we're the true Israelites? Give me that. Amos. Nope. Leviticus 26. I'm going to show you. That's a very good question. The thing that shows us that we are the Israelites is history, prophecy, and our current condition. That's right. So, in this order, prophecy, because it was already said, and then once prophecy is fulfilled, it becomes our history. Right. Like all this, slavery, colonialism, it used to be prophecy. But because we lived it and it already happened, now it's history. It's a historical fact. It's a historical fact that it happened and our current condition. Like right now, we're dealing, on 47th Street, we're dealing with what? Justification. We're dealing with police brutality. We're dealing with a lot of our brothers and sisters getting gunned down at phenomenal rates more than other people. We're dealing with a whole lot of misfortunes. And that's how we know that we are the people of God. That's right. Because God promised that he will punish his people right. for disobeying his laws. Consider this right here. Everybody on the earth sins, all nations. Right. I can go to Chinese right now where there's no black people, and I bet you somebody breaking what's written right here. But well, why are we the only people that get judged more than everybody else? Teach, y'all. That's how we know that we are, the, we are the Israelites. Bring it out. By divine design. We are at the bottom, and we always catch more hell than everybody else. Why? Because obviously God knows something about us that we don't know about ourselves. Teach. Now read, because I don't want to give you a sermon. I want to show you out the book, scholarly. Bring it out. Uh, Leviticus chapter 26, starting verse 14. Now, when you read Leviticus 26 from 1 through 13, it's the blessings. You can read that on your own. I'm going to show you the bad things, because we're experiencing the bad things today. That's how we know we are the Israelites. Right. Come on. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 14. Bring it out. But if ye will not hearken unto me. So... Moses, a black man, was talking to a black race that he delivered out of Africa, which is Egypt. He's telling them the words of God. He says, what? But if ye will not hearken unto me. That me is talking about God. Mo Moses is a prophet. He's speaking on God's behalf to his people, a black race. Right. We're going to find out what black race is this. He said, but if ye will not hearken unto me, read, and will not do all these commandments. You don't want to do these commandments, read. And if ye shall despise my statue, you have statutes underneath those commandments. You have general laws, and then you have statutes explaining those laws in more detail. Read. Or if your soul abhor my judgment. Abhor means to hate. If you hate God's judgments, that's what he's saying. Read. So that ye will not do all my commandments. You don't want to do all the commandments. Read. But that ye break my covenant. God made a covenant with us. I also will do this unto you. This is the consequence of breaking God's covenant. Read. I will even appoint over you terror. God said he will appoint a government over you that is terrible. I will appoint over you terror. Read. Consumption. Consumption. Meaning I'm going to consume you in that terror. Read. And burning anger. Burning, the burning argue. Read, talking about diseases and afflictions of the body, read. That shall consume the eyes. Uh -huh, it's gonna consume your eyes, read. And cause sorrow of heart. It's gonna cause you depression. 
God said, if you want to break my covenant, I'm going to put something so terrible on you. Right. It's going to cause your eyes to consume. And it's going to cause sorrow of heart. You're going to be a depressed, miserable people. Right. Read. And ye shall sow your seed in vain. So just stop right there. Who is the most depressed people on the face of the earth? Who is living under the most white supremacist, ter 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 terroristic, murderous yep. society? Who? Even if you leave this society, you go anywhere else, who else is living under such a harsh regime? Black people, That's Hispanic right. people. And you're gonna find out that these same people are not black people, are not Hispanic people, but are indeed the biblical Israelites. That's right. And ye shall sow your seed in vain. You see that? During the 1600s when we sold in the cotton field, my grandmother picked cotton in Mississippi in the 60s before she came up here to the city. So I know that this is us right here. A lot of our parents, they came from the South, they picked cotton. You ever seen cotton? That ain't some easy stuff to do. They picked tobacco. Our brothers in the Caribbean picked sugar cane. You understand me? Read. For your enemies shall eat it. You see that? Your enemies shall eat it. So who ate our seeds that we planted on the earth? The white slave planters. Mississippi was the cotton capital of the world at one point. Right. Mississippi was very wealthy before 1865, the Emancipation Proclamation. Before they freed the slaves, slaves and chattel slavery, and many of us went north and worked in the factories. But guess what? They was reaping the benefits off our hard work. That's right. Likewise today, if you work for Sam Walton, which is Walmart, you all you're doing is making Sam Walton and his family rich. You making the McDonald's family rich. We don't own McDonald's, we don't own Walmart do, Sam Walton do, the McDonald's family do. You understand? The Bible is talking about races of people conquering other races of people. That's right. But the Christian church told you that this is an uh, individual walk. Yes, it's an individual walk, but God deals with nations. That's deals right. With people as a whole. Right, get out, teach. Read. And I will set my face against you. God said he gonna set his face against us. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. Oh, we getting killed in front of our enemies. Do I, do I need to name the uh, list? Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Mike Brown. We was there when Mike Brown got killed. We was there. I saw the pain in my people's eyes. Y'all remember when Joy Floyd got killed? Uh, give me some more. It's, it, the list is endless. And that's just the ones we know about. How many more that got killed off camera? We are the ones that's being slain at a phenomenal rate. And it's so true that we have to march in the streets and say Black Lives Matter. That's how much we are being put to death. Do y'all understand that? That ain't talking about no other people. But if you still not convinced, I can keep going. Read. They that hate you. God said those that hate you shall reign over you. They're going to make laws and legislations and rule over you. They're going to be financially ruling over you, economically ruling over you. That's why they can come over here to 47th Street, raise the rent up, and push us out. further west. That's right. Uh, push us further south. Teach. Push us further east. <laughs> push some of us further north. Push some of us, we want to lead the state. We, we, tired, we want to lead the city. We're tired of what's going on. Only your oppressor got the power to do so. Three. And ye shall flee when no one pursuing you. God said we shall flee when no one pursuing you. During the times when we was in chattel slavery, a lot of us was running, runaway slaves. Nobody was chasing us, but we was running like our life depended on us. Our life did depend on us. After uh, 1865, the Emancipation Proclamation, technically we were supposed to be free on paper. But what happened? You had the Ku Klux Klan rise up. You had the Knight Riders rise up. You had the Black Clothes. Black Jim Crow laws that made our life such a living hell, we sought to move further north, to the northern cities, to bigger cities to escape what was going on down south. Bring it out. We was fleeing when no man pursued for us. Right, teach. That's talking about us. Read. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me. And all this is because we don't want to listen to God. Read. Then I will punish you seven times more. He said, if that's not enough, I'm going to punish you seven times more. Read. For your sins. Uh-huh. And I will break the pride of your power. Now, stop that. Go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 4. I'm going to show you more. 
Bring it out. I'm gonna show you more. Remember what, I, what the Bible said, not what I said, what the Bible says. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Right. Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Not in that order, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> he, wrote, he wrote the first five books. A right. black man right. wrote it to, the, to a right. black race. Right. Give me Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter one, verse one, one to prove what I'm telling you. Never listen to a man because he run, run, his, run in his mouth. Listen to what he's showing you and proving you out of, remember what I told you, prophecy, history, and our current condition. Right. That's how you know somebody's not lying to you. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter one and verse one. Come on. Out. These be the words. Now what's the book called? The what? The five books no, of. The fifth book. The fifth book of Moses. Of Moses. Called Deuteronomy. Verse one. Verse 1, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Who? All Israel. So the brother said, how do you know that we are the Israelites? I'm showing you. These be the words which Moses spoke to all Israel. I don't have the time or the luxury to read all 28 chapters to you. So I'm going to jump ahead, if I will, if I may, and go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. You can sit down and read it on your own. I have to get to the key points due to my time limit. Teach, I read. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Not because I'm trying to get over to you, over on you. It's because of time restraint. Bring it on. Get to the point, verse 48. <coughs> verse 48. Come on, let's get straight to the cut. Verse 48. Yes. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy. God said we're going to serve our enemies. We served the French, the Portuguese, the Dutch. We served the Muslim empires when they was ruling. Mm -hmm. Egypt. We served ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. We served the Spanish. We served the British. A lot of our West Indian brothers served the British Empire. We served the British Empire up until 70, 1776. Our brothers in the, on the uh, Haitian, uh, the island of Haiti, they served the French. We all served our enemies during our enslavement. Right. Right. Served our enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee. Believe it or not, the Lord sent our enemies against us because we sinned against God. That's right. As a people, we lost our mind. In hunger? Uh-huh. We served them in hunger. Sam Walton, the neighborhood market. You want to go to food? You got to go to the Walton family. Get you, yep, uh, I can't, uh, Ice Mountain. You got to go to the Ice Mountain factory. Now, ain't nothing wrong. You got to, we got to do what we got to do. You thirsty, drink some water, brother. You hungry, get some food. Not on the Sabbath day, but we have to live our life. But understand that your life is governed by God. That's right. And he says what? Read that again from the top. In hunger? We have to serve our enemies in hunger. Even during the time of slavery, we served our enemies in hunger. Hunger. You know, during slavery, we only had two pairs of clothes every year. One pair in the wintertime, one pair in the summertime. That's why a lot of the slaves, our clothes was ripped, torn, shredded. Even if you wasn't a runaway, our clothes was ripped, shorn, uh, uh, torn, all that. Because we had a certain allotment during slavery provided by our slave masters. Likewise today, you want food? You gotta go to your enemies. Read. And in thirst! You want something to drink? Ice Mountain. Who owns that? <laughs> you don't own no machine that's connected to Lake Michigan to purify the water for the hood. You know what you gotta do? You gotta wait for the trucks, like this, uh, that's, uh, that's something else. You gotta wait for the trucks to come into the ghetto and stock the stores, provided by your enemies. Read. In nakedness! And in nakedness, the clothing that you wear. Who owns Adidas? The Adidas family. Even these clothes, we make these ourselves, but we still got to get uh, shipped a patent overseas to a factory that can manufacture the clothing at a rate faster than we can. And we pay them for our service. That's not supposed to be, you know that, right? Every other nation of people has the ability to make their own clothes, provide their own food, but us, proving that we are the Israelites, read. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. When y'all came up, we talk about, we spoke about marriage. You wanna get married to your woman, you have to go to Cook County, downtown. If you're a Chicago resident, you gotta go downtown. If you stay in the suburbs, you might can go to Markham, to the city hall. Guess what, you gotta sign the um, certificate of marriage, saying that this is your wife. Or you gotta sign if you wanna uh, bury your relative, you gotta sign the death certificate. If they died uh, from coronavirus, you gotta put cause of death, COVID-19, uh, uh, whatever. 
You want to get a driver's license, to go to Walmart, to get food, you got to go to your enemies for that. If you want an education, but young brother, you in school, right? If you want to go to school, whatever university you want to go to that you get accepted to, your enemies operate that. You want to go to trade school, your enemies own that. So this, that's what the Bible's talking about. Read. And he, and he, that same enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Officer Ace, where's that sign at? Where's that sign at? He said, and he what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who had yokes of iron upon their neck in the 1600s, the 1700s, the 1800s, the 1900s? Yes. If you get locked up right now and you get transferred from Danville Correctional Facility to Centrella Facility downstate, you got to get locked up. If they transfer you from 26 in California to another facility, shackles. Is that it? Yeah, give me the other one. Okay, yeah, 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 that's it. You see that? I know it's, it's, it's kind of old. That's actually a painting. Remember, there was no Polaroid down back that time, during that time. So what are we out here teaching? We out here teaching that we are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Read. That's right. Until he has destroyed thee. And guess what? He said he gonna have those jokes of iron on our neck until he have destroyed thee. How has he destroyed us? By politics, by religion, by uh, economics. Give me some more. These gangs that believe it or not that we started to protect ourselves in the 50s and 60s, that was infiltrated. But uh, they put drugs and guns and make it easy for them to get these things. And then they perpetuate uh, 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 hate, hate, hatred. I got on another question I would love Give to me, ask. Uh, Section 8. There's many different ways on how they continue to destroy us. Read. Verse 68. Is that it on that? Verse 68. Come on. So again, we show you how we are the Israelites. We're not just up here bumping our guns. That's right. This is verse 68. Again, you can read it on your own. I'm just jumping the key verses. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee. Understand, understand the Lord is allowing this to happen. Because we allowed ourselves to sin against God as a people. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. See, yeah, God said he gonna bring us into Egypt again. Yo, can I ask a question? I got you. The, the Israelites served in Egypt for 430 years. In slavery. God said, I'm gonna send you to Egypt again. Historically, the Israelites never went back into Egypt. That's right. But we did go to America. Right. We did serve, we have served the marriage. We've been here for 401 years. It's 2020, right? Yeah. It's the first slave ship job docked in Jamestown, Virginia, 1619. That's 401 years ago. Very similar circumstances. By divine design. I got you, bro. I got you. Read. Into Egypt again! But how are we going to this modern Egypt? With ships! With what? With ships! It says ships. That's the transatlantic slave ships. Remember. That's right. At this time, they yeah, right. spoken to us, it was prophecy that it would happen. It already happened. Right. Now, historically, if you look back, what race of people went on transatlantic slave ships? You can come on through, bro. That's fine. Yes, sir. Just us. Yes, sir. The 12 tribes of Israel. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.